Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This video will discuss psychodynamic treatment approaches for pathological narcissism, briefly reviewing theoretical underpinnings, currently favored approaches that extend from those theoretical concepts, and providing some general guidelines for anyone working with narcissistic patients, regardless of the model that they're using. So let's get started. Pathological narcissism can be conceptualized as difficulty maintaining a positive, realistic self-image. It's often accompanied by interpersonal issues, feelings of emptiness, and deficits in effective coping when threats to self-esteem are encountered. Pathological narcissism is often associated with positive or negative exaggerations in self-perception, the tendency to idealize or devalue the self and others, depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and even suicide. In its most severe form, pathological narcissism manifests as Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD. For the first half of the 20th century, it was widely believed among clinicians that narcissism could not be effectively treated using available techniques. This is a myth that persists to this very day in the public mind. And this is mainly due to outdated psychoanalytic conceptualizations of the disorder. At the time, it was believed that narcissists could not form object-related transferences in treatment, meaning that they did not relate to the clinician as though she or he were another person from the patient's past. Instead, it was recognized that narcissistic patients would form narcissistic transferences, in which they would project an aspect of their own experience onto the clinician. Since early psychoanalytic methods focused on working with object-related transferences, and not narcissistic transferences, it was thought that narcissists couldn't be treated. In the latter half of the 20th century, new developments in theory and technique caused clinicians to begin viewing narcissism in a different light. Two prominent theorists focused on developing new ways to treat the disorder. The first, Otto Kernberg, worked from a perspective called object relations. Object Relations focuses on how we unconsciously perceive and relate to other people. Kernberg developed a theory of narcissism that emphasizes internal conflicts between emotional needs and early frustrations. In his model, narcissists develop a pathological self that contains deep fissures between authentic needs and feelings, idealized images of self and others, and overwhelming feelings of envy and aggression. He developed a technique that confronts the grandiose self of narcissistic patients by focusing on the ways that narcissists project unwanted thoughts and feelings onto and into those around them. Kernberg's approach focuses on strict boundaries in the therapy relationship. He believes that toxic aggression is at the heart of pathological narcissism and that it must be consistently confronted and exposed in order for the grandiose self to begin to relinquish its dependency on narcissistic defenses. In contrast to Kernberg, Heinz Kohut took a more empathetic approach to conceptualizing and treating narcissism. His work resulted in the development of self-psychology. Kohut identified early unmet emotional and developmental needs that seemed to dominate his work with narcissistic patients. He identified a unique form of transference called self-object transference, in which narcissists relate to others in a way that is designed to shore up or buffer their own fragile self-esteem. Like Kernberg, Kohut believed that narcissists have a fundamental confusion between self and other. But unlike Kernberg, he felt that unmet needs were at the heart of pathological narcissism, not toxic aggression. Kernberg's is a conflict model, whereas Kohut's is a deficit model. He focused on providing the right type of environment in treatment for the narcissist's underdeveloped self to grow stronger, believing that a stronger self would result in less fragmentation, an experience where the self seems to fall apart, and that often leads to depression, overwhelming anxiety, and even suicide. Kohut's method used empathy and a concept called temporary indwelling, in which he would attempt to understand the narcissist's inner world as though it were his own. 
He would then mirror that understanding back to the patient, over time building up feelings of safety and understanding that the patient could rely on to keep from fragmenting. This process was termed transmuting internalization. In recent years, researchers have begun to realize that the theories of Kernberg and Kohut may have both been correct in some ways, but were also incomplete in others. In my perspective, the best way to conceptualize pathological narcissism is as a series of maladaptive defenses, Kernberg, built on top of fundamental relational and developmental deficits, Kohut. The deficits create a fragile self-image that is prone to breakdown, collapse, or fragmentation, while the defenses built on top create a grandiose false self-experience that relies on idealization, entitlement, and projective defenses to keep the underlying fragile self-image from collapse. In other words, Kohut's model explains vulnerable narcissism well while Kernberg's model addresses the grandiose presentation. Treatment principles flow naturally from this recognition. In a vulnerable state, narcissistic patients benefit from a primarily empathic and containing approach that emphasizes positive mirroring. An important principle is to validate without gratifying. That means the clinician should recognize that the patient's striving for admiration and validation comes from a deep place of developmental need, and that simply giving the patient what she or he is asking for will only keep them stuck in the same maladaptive patterns. Instead, the clinician should mirror the desire for admiration without necessarily handing it over. This allows the patient to slowly, over time, become increasingly aware of the underlying deficits in the self and the vulnerabilities they produce while simultaneously providing the experience of being seen and cared about for who they are, rather than for who they feel they need to be. In a grandiose state, narcissistic patients require a more boundaried approach that emphasizes gently confronting the grandiose projections and entitlements, while still holding the basic goodness of the underlying vulnerable self. This approach requires a delicate balancing act, because grandiose narcissistic patients often remain very sensitive to feeling slighted, criticized, or humiliated, and are more likely to react to such feelings with anger or devaluation of the clinician. The clinician must be prepared to tolerate such projections while maintaining a firm sense of the clinician's own worth. Several approaches have attempted to concentrate or manualize these principles. The first is transference-focused psychotherapy, or TFP. Developed by Otto Kernberg himself, TFP is a formal distillation of the principles of his work. It consists of systematically pointing out and confronting maladaptive transference patterns in the therapy, and highlighting inconsistencies in the patient's perceptions of self and others, something he believes is necessary to help the patient form an integrated sense of self. The drawbacks are that it can be difficult to find a trained practitioner, and that the experience can be quite intensive requiring the patient to submit to a frequent meeting schedule and agree to a very structured and at times confrontational methodology. Mentalization-based treatment, or MBT, is a competing manualized approach that focuses on helping the patient to mentalize, that is, to develop increased abilities to understand their own thoughts and the thoughts and feelings of other people. The ability to mentalize is seen as a sort of buffer a space in between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, where we can watch and catch ourselves before doing something harmful or destructive. Young children do not have this ability. They must be taught how to mentalize through consistent, empathically attuned interactions with caregivers. MBT borrows from attachment theory. It also employs a number of principles developed by Heinz Kohut in that it emphasizes feeling misunderstood as a form of relational trauma that interferes with emotional development. MBT is not confrontational. Among other things, the clinician tries to monitor the level of emotional escalation in the patient at all times, always keeping things in a productive zone where emotional growth and insight are possible. In my opinion, manualized approaches are valuable for the purposes of research. 
We need clinicians who are trained to provide a consistent series of interventions in order to evaluate the effectiveness of those techniques. But usefulness to research and usefulness to practice are two different things. The fact of the matter is a good therapist will employ aspects of TFP, MBT, self-psychology, and a number of other approaches as needed. And this perspective aligns well with a recent peer-reviewed article in the Journal of Personality Disorders entitled Principles of Psychodynamic Treatment for Patients with Narcissistic Personality Disorder. The authors recognize that there is no gold standard approach for treating NPD. Instead, they recommend that clinicians take a flexible and individually oriented approach to each narcissistic patient, recognizing that every presentation of the disorder is different. For some patients, a firm and somewhat confrontational approach is required in order to help them work through highly problematic grandiose defenses, while for others, they recommend a witnessing approach that emphasizes emotional holding mirroring and validation without gratifying the pathological need for admiration. For any patient suffering from NPD, treatment will follow a long-term trajectory. Here are some general guidelines for therapists working with narcissistic patients. First, expect to experience lots of pushes and pulls over the course of the treatment. This is true for any personality disorder, but given the variability of narcissistic presentations in therapy, clinicians should expect the unexpected when it comes to working with narcissists. Narcissistic patients often project unwanted aspects of their own self-experience onto and into those around them. Clinicians may be required to tolerate feeling worthless, devalued, ineffective, or even invisible. They should recognize that these are the patient's own disavowed feelings, that the patient is managing by causing the clinician to feel them instead. Conversely, clinicians may at times be required to hold feelings of being idealized. They may feel smart, powerful, even infallible. Unprepared or uninsightful clinicians will identify with these experiences instead of recognizing them as aspects of the narcissistic patient's own unconscious struggles with grandiosity versus inferiority. Second, work with narcissistic patients is challenging to the clinician's own narcissistic vulnerabilities. In the face of feeling devalued, ineffective, or invisible, clinicians may unwittingly strike back in subtle or even overt ways, falling into cycles of enactments that erode the therapeutic alliance and confirm the patient's unconscious belief that even trusted figures will eventually attack or humiliate them. The clinician's task is to tolerate and metabolize these aspects of the narcissist's disavowed self-experience, slowly and gradually feeding them back to the patient in a modified form that promotes healing and growth instead of recapitulating problematic relationship patterns. Third, clinicians should be wary of taking too aggressive or too passive a stance. The aggressive stance will only inflame patients in a grandiose state and will overwhelm patients in a vulnerable state, while a passive stance colludes with grandiose strivings to dominate the relationship in order to shut out possibilities of feeling shame or humiliation. At the same time, such a stance will leave vulnerable patients feeling like maybe there's nobody there at all. Instead, aim for a flexible approach that maintains important boundaries, challenges when necessary, and perhaps most importantly, prioritizes the patient's experience at all times. Finally, clinicians should not underestimate the importance of witnessing. Narcissistic patients often feel invisible, regardless of how much emotional space they are occupying. And this was Kohut's main insight. The wounded self of narcissistic patients is in danger of disintegrating. The experience of being consistently seen and empathically understood is the best medicine for this condition. Be cautious about responding to polls in therapy to do something. 
Often, simply listening and reflecting is what the patient needs and is actually seeking. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to leave comments and questions and to hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified about future videos I make on the topic of narcissism. You can also visit my website at www.dreatonson.com and find lots more information about narcissism from a compassionate and non-stigmatizing perspective in my book entitled Unmasking Narcissism, A Guide to Understanding the Narcissist in Your Life. There's a link in the description if you're interested. Take care.